So I wanted to take you through some of our data in respect um, of the regulatory department at the GEOS. So I appreciate um, statistics can sometimes be a little bit mundane, but I'll try my best to be as succinct as possible. Um, so the slide you can see is really based on the last three years of data. Um, it's really been created to kind of take you through the life cycle of the regulation work that we've been, or what that has been conducted over the last three years. Um, so to start at the top here, there, there you can see um, queries, and there's been 411 queries received over the three years. So just to touch very briefly on what query is, so queries range from a variety of, of sources, and that could be, for example, patients or registrants, uh, members of the public, other organisations, for example. Um, and then for the purposes of the webinar, what, what I think I'll, I'll do is just go through a very, very quick kind of sample of what, what queries we receive. Um, they could relate to confirmation of processes, whether that's FTP processes or treatment, um, how to access records and queries around data protection, advertising queries, or, or certainly over the last year, um, queries related to the coronavirus as well. Um, there's a long list, I won't take you through the whole list right now, um, but essentially all queries seem to be quite different in nature. Um, and, and quite challenging for us, but we always strive to, to give uh, an informed uh, answer where we can. Um, so quite a few of those queries actually amount to a concern, and I'll come on to what a concern is in, in a minute, but before I do, you see the second box down, um, it says section 32, um, of which you can see uh, we received uh, 140 matters that have been opened. So what I mean by section 32 is really those um, uh, matters that relate to Section 32 of the Osteopath Act. Um, they are essentially allegations of, uh, I suppose to put it, illegal practice um, of, of individuals where they've been uh, promoting uh, themselves as um, a registered osteopath when they're not registered with us. Um, so potentially a, a misuse of, of a protected title. Um, so the number of prosecutions in this regard is, is really small. Um, without, out of 140, I think there's been two over the last two or three years, so it's, it's a very small percentage of cases. Um, so with the, the top two boxes, queries and 32, sorry, section 32 matters, whether that, you know, of course they're very important um, and, and it's something that the regulation department um, work very closely on. But what I wanted to come, come on to now is the fitness to practice process itself. And that starts um, with the third box down um, titled Concerns Received. And that is, uh, as you can see, there is 256. So this is really the very start of the fitness to practice process. And forgive me if I say FDP, I'll try and say fitness to practice going forward. Um, so as I say, really the start of the fitness to practice process. Um, so that's 256 received over the last three years, as you see from the slide. And it's that 256 figure, which is a really key figure um, and it's and it's here is because the rest of the data that follows in, in the kind of the funnel diagram that you can see relates directly to that figure. So out of the 256 concerns received you'll see that 132 concerns and that's 51 percent were closed by a screener and therefore these these didn't enter into the formal fitness to practice process. Um, just to quickly um, touch on what a screener is, and you can find this in the glossary as well. Um, a screener is, is an osteopathic member of the investigating committee, and their role is really to determine whether the GEOSC has the power to investigate um, the complaint that has been uh, made to, to the GEOSC. Um, as you may also see, there's 118 cases, um, which is 40, uh, 46% that were opened by a screener for the GEOS to investigate. So that's the, you can see that one of the middle boxes there where it says uh, referred to the IC. So when I say about the IC, when I uh, talk of the IC, I mean the investigating committee. Um, they are made up of five members and they're a mix of, uh, of registrants and lay members. And, um, and what you'll see from the, the data that follows is that the investigating committee closed 46 cases and that's 39% of uh, known case to answer, and I, I understand there's a slide that follows next regarding case to answer, so I won't go into detail around that. But they referred 60 cases, and that's 51% to the Professional Conduct and uh, sorry, Professional Conduct Committee, also known as the PCC. Um, 
so we now come really come on to the final stage of the fitness to practice process and that is uh, the uh, PCC the professional conduct committee um, so this is really the the hearing the final stages of the process and the hearing stage um, so thinking of the 60 cases that were referred to the PCC or uh, the professional conduct committee um, in the last three years you will see that um, what follows is, is quite telling um, so there are 15 registrants where unacceptable professional conduct was not found uh, and therefore there was no sanction delivered by the committee. Um, there are 12 registrants who received an admonishment, also known uh, as, a, as a warning, I suppose. Um, eight registrants received a uh, suspension from the register and there's only five registrants that have actually been removed from the register and that's over the last three years. So what I wanted to do really is kind of reiterate that certainly the, these the final the sanction percentages are actually very low. So going back to the figure of two five six, and that's the third third box down. Um, just quickly go over the, get that again in percentages. There's six percent uh, that were found no unex uh, sorry unacceptable professional conduct um, not found. Five percent received an admonishment. 3% received a suspension, and it's only 2% of the 256 concerns that actually uh, were removed from the register. So I, I hope that the, the, the funnel kind of diagram that the, you can see gives you a, a visual indication and, and I suppose demystifies the outputs of the, F, uh, the fitness to practice process. Um, and you can see from kind of the narrowing of, of the diagram that, that it represents a reduction in, in the sanctions that are passed down at the latter stages of the fitness to practice process.